Here I am back again for another interesting book. It is Robin Hood, but it's Robin Hood with the animals. So I think this will be fun. I think you'll enjoy that. I hope you do. I enjoy all these stories myself. Long ago, England was ruled by the wicked, greedy Prince John. He ordered the Sheriff of Nottingham to tax the people so heavily that they were forced to become outlaws. Two of the most famous outlaws were Robin Hood and Little John would steal the tax money from the sheriff and give it back to the poor. But they were stealing, and that's not so good, is it? Even though they were giving the money back to the poor people, they were still stealing, and stealing isn't a very good thing to do. One day, Prince John was traveling by coach to Nottingham to pick up more tax money. He was so busy counting his gold that he didn't notice he was passing through Sherwood Forest, the home of Robin Hood. Nor did he see little John and Robin Hood watching from a tree. Look at all that gold. Hey, little John, let's play Prince John a little visit. Look at them. Do you see him in the tree? Do you see the coach going there? Oh, boy. In this coach, Prince John was talking to his counselor, Sir Hip, about his favorite subject, gold. Beautiful gold. Life has been so wonderful since King Richard left for the Crusades. He treated the people too nicely, and he missed out on all his lovely gold. How I love gold. Can you imagine love gold so much? Here's the carriage. Can you see the carriage okay? Robin Hood and Little John were standing by the roadside, disguised as lady fortune tellers when the coach passed by. Can you see them? Care to have your fortune told, Your Majesty? Fortune tellers. How droll, stop the coach. Fortune tellers, how droll, stop the coach. While Robin Hood told Prince John's fortune, he slipped the royal rings off his fingers, and little John helped himself to the prince's gold. Prince John never even knew he had been robbed until Robin Hood and little John had escaped. Can you imagine stealing a ring like that? My, oh my. That's not fun, but it's a fun book. Meanwhile, the Sheriff of Nottingham was busy collecting taxes. I must have more taxes. Hand over that gold. Coins, honey. He even took the coin that Mrs. Bunny had given her son. Flippy, Skippy, for his birthday. The Sheriff had no heart. Can you imagine somebody taking something that you just got for your birthday? That's not fun. Robin Hood didn't think little Skippy should go without presents on his birthday. Here, Skippy, take my bow and arrow, and here's my hat. It's a little big, but you'll grow into it. Uh-oh, let's see what happens. The first time Skippy tried the bow, his arrow flew over Prince John's castle wall. On the other side, Skippy saw Maid Marian and Lady Cluck. Even though Marion was related to Prince John, she was Robin Hood's friend. Long ago, they had been childhood sweethearts. One day, Robin's friend Friar Tuck came to Sherwood Forest with some news. Prince John is having an archery tournament tomorrow, and you're the best archer in all of England. I'd like to go, Friar Tuck, but if I do, I'm sure to be captured. Maid Marion will have a kiss for the winner. Ooh, la la, what are we waiting for? Now you know archery, that's with the bow and arrow. The next day, two strangers appeared at the tournament, a stork and a duke. Nobody will recognize us in these disguises, said Robin Hood. I'll win the tournament and the kiss, but no one will know the winner is Robin Hood. Soon, the stork and the sheriff were the only ones left in the contest. And even though the sheriff tried to cheat by having the target move, the stork made an amazing shot and won. Prince John watched very closely. See how they're using the bow and arrow to go to the target? When Robin came to claim his prize, Prince John was ready. And now I name you. The loser! Seize him! I 
set in church a sudden instant and even immediately just. It looked like the end for Robin Hood. But suddenly little John grabbed Prince John. Let my friend go or else. Once Robin Hood was free, a big fight began. Robin Hood and little John fought off the guards bravely. Swords clashed and arrows flew. Maiden Marian was almost seized by the guards. But Robin climbed a pole, grabbed a rope, and swung down to her rescue. Then he and his friend escaped into the woods. Can you see how he's taken her? That's a big story. Safely back in Sherwood Forest, Robin and his band celebrated. Little John sang a song making fun of Prince John. It was so funny that soon all of Nottingham was singing it. Oh, but Prince John was angry when he heard the song. Double the taxes, triple the taxes, I'll make them pay. But of course nobody could pay and the prisons were full. The sheriff even robbed a church and arrested Friar Truck for objecting. Can you imagine robbing a church? Oh my goodness, that's terrible. When Prince John heard Friar Truck was in jail, he planned a trap for Robin Hood. We'll hang Friar Truck in the morning. And when that thief, Robin Hood, comes to the rescue, we'll have him. But Robin Hood was a foxy fellow, and he planned the rescue for that night. He and Little John climbed the high castle wall. Then Robin Hood dressed up like a guard and sneaked up to the sleepy sheriff of Nottingham. Carefully, he stole the jail key. Here, Little John, take these and open the cell doors. Everyone in the jail was surprised to see a familiar face enter the room. They cried out for joy. Shh, quiet. We're breaking out of here. Little John freed everyone. Meanwhile, Robin had climbed into Prince John's bedroom, where all the gold was kept. Prince John and the circus were sound asleep. Robin tied the bags of gold to a rope, rigged between the bedroom windows and the jail. See how he was doing it with the rope? See how he tied it on? Then he's going to pull it. As the gold reached the jail, Little John took the bags off the rope. Take them and run, he shouted as he passed the gold to the escaping prisoners. Just then, Prince John awoke. My gold, it's gone, guards! The courtyard became a jumble of flying arrows, guards and fleeing prisoners. Trapped in the castle by himself, Robin climbed a high tower to escape the guards. See up here at the tower. See how he did that? How the rope was going over there with the gold? Robin's in the tower. Burn him out, shouted the sheriff. But Robin escaped by diving into the moat. After him, shoot him. He's in the moat. All the sheriff's men fired arrows into the water. When Robin's hat bobbled to the surface of the moat, Prince John was overjoyed. He's finished, done for. The moat is it's the water between the building and the uh, uh, the the yard or the field, whatever, wherever it is there, and they call it a moat. <clears throat> Even little John thought Robin had drowned. Poor Robin, he never had a chance. Then up popped Robin from under the water. Hey, little John, I'm all right. I've been breathing through this reed. See, this is a, he called it a reed, but it's like a little stick, and like a straw almost. It has holes in it so you can put it above the water and be able to breathe. He was pretty smart, wasn't he? Soon after Robin's narrow escape, good King Richard came back from crusades to take his place on the throne of England. Happiness returned to the land. Robin Hood and Maid Marian were married, and their friends came to wish them well. Then hear how they got married. The fox. That's not a nice story. That was a nice story. I like Robin Hood, especially with the animals. I think it's more interesting. I hope you enjoyed it. Doo -doo -doo.